Greetings viewers, welcome to my channel, and today's review is on the K-Line CP-60 or the Wine Cellar DI Base Driver Pedal. This was given to me by K-Line Technologies as a thank you for pointing out the issue with their CP-81 10-band EQ. And while that is awesome, thank you so much K-Line, uh, my review will still be unbiased in what I really think of this pedal. A quick unboxing. You have four rubber feet that you can put on the bottom of the unit if you wanted to. If this was going to be on the ground standalone, they even give you the indentations for it, which is cool. And then it comes with a battery clip. Since you cannot put the battery inside the pedal, they give you this clip so where it goes from a 9-volt clip to the barrel adapter, which is on the back here. And it was inside a plastic bag, and it was surrounded by foam. So very well packaged for the size, and you got some nice cool graphics on it as well. Just want to give a quick shout out to Joe Bass on YouTube. He did a demonstration of this pedal and it actually, it sounds really good from what I saw on there. So I'm really uh, excited to try it for myself, but I'll link to his channel and the video that he did in the description below. Now, I believe this pedal is intended to be a clone of the Tech 21 Sansamp Bass Driver DI pedal. And that pedal has a couple more features than, than this pedal does, but at the price that this pedal is sold at, the controls and features that you get, I think, are really good. You know, it's not every day you come across a pedal that's roughly about $40 US, maybe a little bit more with tax and everything, that you get a preamp and a basically a, a bass direct box that gives you some control over your sound that's going to the PA system. But I'm going to take this apart real quick before I plug it in. Let's take a look inside and see what the circuit board looks like. All right, I've disassembled the board as much as I'm going to be able to without having to do some unsoldering work. The XLR port and the DC input port is what's actually holding it in place right now. But overall layout, from what I can see, is actually pretty good. And I may not be able to get the best picture with the light on. But what I can tell you is that the XLR is being run by a 4580 dual channel operational amplifier. That's actually a very good amplifier. And it looks like the preamp itself is being run by a 4558 operational amplifier. Uh, that might actually be part of the quarter inch. I don't know. But I can see that this is K-Line version 3.2. And this was manufactured in 6-10-2019. Now, I know you won't be able to see this too well on camera, but what I was able to research, there is a pair of quad-channel TI-074C JFET operational amplifiers in this pedal. And that may sound like Greek to most people, but what I can tell you is that it is a very good part in terms of a driver Base pedal or just a driver pedal in general. JFETs, that's a good part from a very reputable company. And I really like the, so far I'm really liking the construction. One of the features I wanted to see is what is pin one? Pin one is supposed to be the shield ground. And I wanted to see is that pin one connected to the frame of the pedal, which it is not, it is floating. Next, I wanted to check is the negative portion of the incoming DC, how is that connected to pin one? Because that could indicate potential for noise. Now I am probing the red wire, but as a lot of people know, effects pedals are barrel positive and tip negative. And what we're seeing here is just under 11 kilo ohms. So there is a high DC resistance from the grounds. Now that can potentially induce some noise. And now I'm checking from the frame case ground to the negative signal ground here of the board. And I'm happy to report that it is floating as well. So they did that correctly. I'm very happy to see that. The reason I'm happy to see that is because you're often going to get your pedals grounded through the instrument cable that you connect it to your amplifier. Because your amplifier's input is often the main ground for your signal anyway. And I can see that there's a direct connection from your input and output jacks to the frame case ground. And that's good because it'll shunt any RF that could be generated from here 
through your gr amplifier's ground input. All right, I got the pedal back together. A word of caution, when you put it back together or if you're experiencing noise through your amplifier, uh, any kind of like buzzing noise, double check that these collar nuts are nice and snug and tight because the casing or the body of the actual jack is made of plastic and the one pin that's closest to the edge there actually connects to this collar and that's what completes the circuit to ground the case and if you don't do that you're going to get noise on your amplifier here on the xlr side uh, the case itself is grounded obviously and then pin one is lifted floating from the case now in that scenario you really don't need a ground lift switch that you would normally find on a lot of X, uh, equipment with XLR because it has no direct connection to the case there, which means you're not likely to get any noise there. There are some applications where you would want to have pin one connected to the case as well as your equipment, like all your, your bass guitar pedals, your amplifier and whatnot, where that ground is connected. But I just can't think of a scenario where that would come up very often. So it's, it makes sense why they do not have a ground lift switch on here. It's just permanently lifted and that should give you the best chance of not having any noise on the PA system. To sum up my final thoughts on this pedal, I really think this pedal is worth the money. It is a very versatile pedal. I think it's more of a clean drive than it is a dirty drive pedal. Uh, you can get some dirty tones out of it, but you really have to crank that drive knob all the way up and then that you're going to get a lot of harshness on it because of the way that the architecture is inside. I don't have a schematic, but uh, you that's the beauty of having a blend knob here. You can blend back some of the original signal to kind of take that harshness down. You have some very useful low and high shelving here. In fact, they're a boost and a cut, and you can really boost the lows and the highs quite a bit. And again, that makes things very useful. The harmonics is actually very useful, but you got to be careful on how much highs and harmonics you increase because then it's just going to sound extremely harsh. Uh, I've been kind of experimenting here at 3 o'clock and then the highs at like 12, 1 o'clock, and that's really been giving me a nice uh, Sansamp-like tone, and this is very close to that sound, although I think the Sansamp can get a lot dirtier than this pedal can. The one thing that I'm not really a big fan of, but it's not that big of a deal, I'm probably nitpicking, is that this is not a true bypass pedal. What it's doing is that it is actually a buffered circuit from the input to the output quarter inch jacks. But this true bypass switch here is actually bypassing this buffered circuit from the two chips in the drive circuitry up above here. Not a true bypass by m the most common definition, but it is, it's actually, it actually works quite well, I'll say, because I don't hear any loss of tone when this pedal is disengaged. It's actually very quiet when it's off, and it's not that much more noisy when it's turned on, unless you really have some exaggerated uh, hot boost on the highs and the drive and the harmonics. It actually is a very quiet pedal and it doesn't take away from your tone from what I can tell. And if you're using a passive bass, for example, having a buffered input and output can actually help you because that helps to impedance match to whatever other pedals that you have in your signal chain. Overall, I really like this pedal. I would highly recommend it. It's inexpensive, it's versatile, it's useful, and it gives you a great sound for the money. I apologize that I did not get into any kind of sound demos of this. There's a lot of videos out there that have sound demos of this already. And definitely uh, check out Joe Bass's channel. He's reviewed a lot of these K-lines already. I really wanted to focus on the technical aspect of it and look at the guts and see what's really running underneath the hood there. And I'm very impressed of what I see. Any questions at all, please leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Cheers.